Good afternoon. I'm Trish Morris, and this is UN News. Unrest in India and Pakistan continues to grow following India's invasion of Kashmir, which the Indian government has claimed is necessary to prevent further terrorist attacks. The terrorist that attack that occurred yesterday has continued to claim lives. Several of those poisoned by the sarin gas have not survived their injuries. There has been mass rioting in Pakistan near the Indian embassy. A demonstration in Islamabad has quickly turned violent. An Indian diplomat has been taken to the hospital. The extent of his injuries are unknown. You can see on this map the movement of Indian troops into the Kashmir region. Maurice Boudot, a spokesperson for the Pakistani general staff, commented on the conflict earlier today. The Pakistani government um, denies any links with so-called terrorist groups that uh, are in the Kashmir region. Um, but more importantly, we condemn the Indian invasion of our province of Kashmir and that we have authorized all units of the Pakistani army to repel such invaders. Also, authorization has been, has been given to use our arsenal of nuclear weapons if so threatened. Just minutes ago, in response to Budo, Indian, an Indian spokesperson released the following statement. Our invasion of Kashmir is only to reprimand the terrorists that Pakistan has been harboring there for too long. It is because of Pakistan's inability co to control the terrorist groups in Kashmir that the government of India is taking action. Our movement of troops is not an invasion, but rather a buffer zone to prevent any further terrorist activities against our country. We have no intention of invading into Pakistan as we do not want unnecessary bloodshed. However, any action against Indian troops will be met with an appropriate response. We have with us today Dr. Morris Himka from Colombia and Dr. Vladimir Morisov from Moscow State University. They are leading experts on the history of the conflict between India and Pakistan, and hopefully they'll be able to shed light on recent events and tell us what the future may hold. Hi, I'm here with uh, Dr. Vladimir Morisov of the Moscow State University and, uh, and Morris Inka of Columbia University to discuss some of the main perspectives and various ideas regarding the current crisis between India and Pakistan. So to begin, what are some of the main perspectives on, uh, main foreign policy perspectives on this? Well, I think this is really a terribly sticky situation for this region, especially for India. They've just been doing so great lately. It's really a shame to see this all kind of go down the toilet, you know? What, what, what do you think about this? Yeah, it's really too bad um, for India, for Pakistan, for world community. I mean, if nuclear war... Oh, especially. <laughs> I remember war. growing up, nuclear war, it's a possibility. And right now also. So oh. it's like it like it like me twenty years ago, you know. So the world is a strange place. But speaking of the world, like there's so many different perspectives going on here right now, aren't there? Like, well, there's the you got the Indians and the Pakistanis themselves. Then you got the Chinese and the Americans and the Russians and the Europeans, and everyone's got their own kind of two cents to contribute here. But like I said earlier, it's a really sticky situation. Now, the Chinese, the Chinese, I think, might kind of have an interesting sort of role to play in this thing here. They've had border conflicts with India before, I think sometime in the 60s. I could be mistaken, though, but it's kind of a... Right now, I think yeah, the it's Chinese, 60, it's 60. they yeah. want to play on the status quo, I think. I don't see them making any big changes, but I do get the sense that they'll kind of be a mediator here, sort of, because they've got important ties to Pakistan, especially that land border that Pakistans have with the Chinese via the Kashmir region and stuff. So the Chinese main interest will probably be to protect that land border without kind of souring things with India too much. Yeah, and also I, I think it's important for Chinese uh, not to have referendum because if the referendum in Kashmir, they say, well, international community may be... Uh, have a referendum in Tibet, and China not want that. Exactly, it's such uh, a standard that they don't want to have to deal with. So China, it uh, really stay back, uh, try to stabilize, but no referendum. I don't see the Chinese getting involved militarily either. They're too precarious of a position, especially now. 
Mm-hmm. And what you say about uh, about Pakistan? Oh, the Pakistanis, that's just a whole other kettle of fish. Like, things have been... Curry so fish. S- Sorry? Cur- curry fish? Curry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've had any Pakistani cuisine, so I can't really say, but there's this good restaurant down by Central Park, kind of. Uh, we go uh, sometime, uh, we go yeah. sometime. So, sorry, sorry. Well, anyways, the Pakistanis, again, they're also in a sticky situation here because back in the olden days, it was always the Russians would side with the Indians and the Americans would side with the Pakistanis. But now, Pakistan has been, no idea is that anyone knows what they're up to, whether they've got, they had Bin Laden there, and then, there's again, the Americans are throwing money at them, and they're not seeing where it's going, right? So the, this ISI, intelligence agency, they're the ones that the Indians think are behind this whole thing. So they're kind of a loose cannon here, I get the sense. So America has apparently been donating this anti-terror funding to them, and it's been, no one knows where it's ending up, and it's kind of soured relations. Like, the ISI completely overlooked the fact that bin Laden was on their soil, and now they're starting this whole thing with India, and it's just, I don't see it ending well, especially in terms of the American-Pakistani relationship. Like, at this point, I'd sooner see the Americans siding with India. I don't know, though. Yes, it's complicated, uh, very complicated for USA. But what what do you think about uh, India? India? How India should behave? Well, India's main issue is basically anything Pakistan wants, they probably want the opposite. <laughs> so, in order for them to come to any sort of solution here, it's going to have to boil down to some sort of agreement between the two of them that they can work out on their own, kind of. But India has lots of allies in the region, too, that... It, that will probably give it some serious support if it ever comes to a Security Council. Vote. Russia will always support India. I know. So, would you, would you care to elaborate on the Russian position? Already? Oh, yeah. It's, it's easy for me because I work with Russia for a long, long time in foreign ministry. Yeah. It just now that I pen, pensioner, I do a little bit of uh, talking here and there. But I work with Russia long I know Russian foreign policy. Russia will always stay by India. India a huge partner for Russia. Russia sell lots of weapon to India. Um, they like this. Uh, and you mentioned the that the Europeans have their own two cents. Well, what, it's what not so that? much a two cents. There's a lack of any sense at all because, <laughs> to be honest, the Europeans. Quite clearly, they don't really care about this issue. It's such a non-issue for them, which is kind of ironic, because when you think back, this whole pa- uh, Kashmir, India, Pakistan, it's all, it's all kind of the British's fault, you know? Like, they, they drew up these maps with completely arbitrary lines without having any idea of what's going where, and then now, here we are dealing with it decades later. But I don't really see the Europeans giving much of a damn about this whole thing. They're just... It's not kind of an issue for them. Like the European media, it's hardly mentioned. They're much more concerned about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I guess it's just closer to home somehow. It's true, but uh, it's important that uh, European power want referendum. In, that is true. In Kashmir, yes. They, they think that uh, democracy, la la la, you know. Uh, uh, what they say, free speech, da da da. So would that be uh, a sticking point with the Chinese perhaps? Yes, probably, yes. Uh, it's a sticky situation. Aside from European, not many want referendum, yeah. But Europe tries to stick to it. So, what about some previous agreements between these countries, between India and Pakistan? They've had... Well, there was a war in, in 65 and a war in 71. Yeah, they've had their issues in the past, but will any of the historical agreements play any part in resolving this current conflict? It's hard to say, really, because, well, when you think about it, India and Pakistan aren't actually that different, really. They're culturally quite similar, and the only difference, really, is kind of like, there's slight ethnic differences, and, of course, religion is a big sticking point with them, but they have hashed out some agreements in the past. Now, there's a big water agreement that they have. Like, even if there's a conflict, they're still going to be trading between the two of them with all their water and electricity and stuff, so... They kind of need each other in a weird way. What? What? I don't know. Yeah, you know, in 1972, it uh, a while back, uh, India and Pakistan signed uh, Simla Agreement. Oh. Yeah, you remember? I think I do. Yeah, 
Um, and what the Simla agreements say is two things. First thing, that India and Pakistan respect each other's borders except for Kashmir, and that if conflict break out in Kashmir, they not start war in general. So mm -hmm. that is good because, you know, um, if nuclear war uh, happen, it's uh, equally bad for India and Pakistan. So, so they try to contain conflict just to yeah. Kashmir. Okay. Yeah. And second thing is that uh, Simla agreement say Kashmir is a problem between two countries, India and Pakistan. And uh, United Nations should have no, uh, really? no stake in this problem and that India and Pakistan sort it out by themselves. Hmm. I don't know whether uh, this can really work because India and Pakistan so hard for them to get not along, friends, like not this, like no. me and you, no. Oh. But the United Nations could act as a mediator for, for an this agreement between the two. Help mediate an agreement between India and Pakistan. I can see that, no. Rather than simply impose it on its own. Well, that's not the whole thing with like imposing a ceasefire. Like, really, where does that get us? Well, that kind of just. It won't really solve the problem, or I'll just leave it for later generations to attempt to figure out just where this whole thing goes back to. I mean, if the British had just sorted this out in the first place, then we wouldn't be sitting here today talking about this. Yes, uh, ceasefire, I think, really bad policy. Uh, because uh, what happened, it reward aggressor. If I That's have true. lots of tanks and, you know, good Russian tanks, fast ones, uh, and I go in, and then the UN says, oh, peace, peace, ceasefire, ceasefire, then I win, right? And that's not, uh, not justice. Um, so a ceasefire is dangerous solution, yeah. What do you think uh, is more uh, better solution? Well, I think ultimately it's like in the civil agreement. They need to find something to work it out with themselves within the Kashmir region. But the main problem is it's hard to define exactly where Kashmir ends and where it begins because... The Pakistanis have their own conception of it, which goes against what the Indians think. And the Chinese also have their own two cents in this whole kind of sticky situation here. So I think what we're going to need to do is almost sort of like redraw our borders here, not in accordance with a ceasefire, but in like a way that benefits both countries. If that boils down to a referendum or not, that's not for me to say. But I think the, the UN's role here should be kind of to push along the process rather than impose it from like a top-down perspective, kind of? Yeah, so lasting, sustainable peace. That's exactly. what, that's what we want. Work for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your thoughts on this issue. I think that completes our It was time. a pleasure. Yeah. Good, thank you. And uh, what were you saying about restaurant in oh, Central Park? Uh, it's a bit down off the avenue there. It's kind of near the Trump Tower and stuff. <laughs> it's got lots of good fish and it's very spicy. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you, Dr. Himka and Dr. Morisov. I'm Tris Morris, and thank you for watching UN News. <laughs> <laughs>